This is Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. Continue part six, uh, November 2016, how to hide 400 million New York Times story about a divorce between Robert and Sarah, uh, an ultra wealthy man trying to uh, hide money from his soon to be ex-wife. Robert's company had left behind until he had settled with the Florida Attorney General. Fisher had assumed Robert was running a basically legitimate internet business. Now he realized that not only XT had come under investigation, but it also investigation created an opening for Sarah. Robert had signed a binding agreement with Florida Attorney General just nine months earlier to keep Acti from skipping out on refunds, and agreement barred Robert from implementing any change in the form of doing business with organizational identity as a method of avoiding the terms and conditions set forth in the agreement. Fisher felt there was a pretty good description for Robert seemed to be doing with offshore companies Moreover, papers turned over at the time showed that Sarah was sole owner of XT's subsidiary and was subject to the same settlement. That meant that Sarah was also bound by its terms. This gave Fisher an idea. In May, he opened a third front, one that would give Sarah the most powerful legal tool to begin peeling back the layers of her husband's finances, intervening in the Florida Attorney General's dormant case, he claimed, Robert had embroiled Sarah's company in fraud against the people of Florida. The only way to stop it was for the court to drag the whole business, the Cook Trust and the Nevis Company, and whatever else the court would let Fisher go to find back in Florida. To put it another way, Sarah sued herself. Robert's lawyers moved to toss this lawsuit out of court too. Fisher's thought that it would become kind of a private attorney general as he put it, pursuing Robert for the public good. Robert's lawyer saw it differently. It's unfounded, illogical, frivolous for Sarah to sue herself and her husband on behalf of the Attorney General, they argued. Robert's personal lawyer, a veteran litigator named Gary Rosen, dismissed the lawsuit in court, a leverage point conceded by Fisher to pursue Robert in the divorce. Robert's Orchard Trust was not an elaborate scheme to defeat the settlement, the lawyers argued, but a normal estate planning of the wealthy and successful businessman. And Sarah, they said, was no victim. She had been part of her husband's planning from the very beginning. It was, in truth, hard to say whether Sarah's involvement with the offshore began and ended. In court filings, Robert produced an email showing that at least one occasion Robert's advisors had discussed setting up separate trusts for Sarah and for the couple's United States properties. When I look closely at the contracts between XD and Omega, I notice that one of them bore only Robert's signature on behalf of Omega, but also that Sarah, on behalf of XD, she was also one of the beneficiaries of the Cook Island Trust, albeit only an unlikely event Robert and both of the two daughters happened to precede her in death, predecease her. Indeed, because Sarah was in the United States, resident with a large ownership stake in several profitable United States businesses, she stood to pay far less taxes if her husband could move the profits offshore. Moreover, both Sarah and Fisher now stood the benefit of a new legal strategy. Lawyers are barred from working on contingency and divorces, but in civil lawsuits, Fisher would be allowed to charge Sarah a percentage of whatever money he could find and drag back to Florida. Strikingly, Sarah didn't seem to have much sympathy for consumers who had filed complaints against her family companies, the very basis of Fisher's carefully plotted legal strategy. On more than one occasion, first during a long meeting in New York and other candlelit Italian dinner with Fisher and Potter in Delray Beach, I asked Sarah whether she had reservation about how she and Robert had made their money, whether she regrets she had about her husband, I learned, did not extend to the family business. Every time you click on some ad, someone gets money, she said, and, and, and in this case, the money, those people are us. 
All this raises possibilities. Sarah's main objection to the offshore scheme was that her husband had decided to cut her out of it. Robert himself insinuated as much. Wow, your Jeff is desperate, he texted her in May 2015. Meaning Fisher, after a Canadian judge issued a further freeze on his assets, why would he want to expose you by trying to reopen an attorney general settlement? But okay, we'll throw you under the bus. Sarah says he always knew Robert was trying to minimize their taxes, but like many wealthy people who hired expensive help to execute complex tax transactions, Sarah had considered herself to avoid taxes, not evading them. Precisely the distinction wealthy people hire an accounting firm like Pascal Bolton to observe on their behalf. However, finally, now through, she was relying on Fisher and to dismantle Pascal Bolton's handiwork. <sighs> Fisher's argument was that Robert had begun offshoring companies to shield himself from the consumer lawsuits. But then, as the divorce grew imminent, redeployed the same plan to shield assets from Sarah and assertion bolstered by a new discovery. Studying bank documents, Fisher had subpoenas, Fisher paralegal, Lindsay Crew noticed that Sarah's stampede stamp signature appeared to be on paperwork as early as 2013 that gave XD executive name Skip Middleton, Robert's right-hand man, authority over at least six XD-related bank accounts with Wells Fargo. A few months later, Milton, Middleton used his newfound authority to remove Sarah from the accounts. Now long after that time, Robert created a Cook Island Trust, something using Sarah's signature stamped had caused RSOP, the family holding company, to guarantee a $17.5 million loan from Florida lender called C1 Bank using the deja vu as collateral. The loan papers attested that Middleton had witnessed Sarah signing for the loan in Florida, but Sarah wasn't in Florida. On the date indicated, her passport stamps provided she was actually in Toronto. A clearer picture emerged as they studied the documents subpoenaed from Daskell Bolden. It turned out that in early 2013, after Sarah asked X, the executive, to inform her of any cash transfer of a major business decision, Robert ordered Middleton to cut her off. Over email, he told Middleton to ban her from the Boca Raton offices to remove Sarah as a signatory of the company bank account. Middleton forwarded the email to Daskal Bolton, accountant in Houston, we have a problem, Middleton wrote, referring to Robert's demands. The bank forms adding Middleton to the account, supposedly with Sarah's permission, were filed two days earlier. A lawyer for the Middleton did not reply to a request for comment. When Fisher dis disposed him this past April, Middleton invoked the Fifth Amendment, writes almost 300 times, including the question whether he had forged Sarah's signature. A spokesman for Daskal Bolton told me that the firm would not comment on the litigation of clients' matters, but documents obtained by Fisher suggest that Robert's lawyers and accountants had indeed spent 2013 trying to make him untouchable, trading complex organization charts, debating what companies uh, or to create countries and, and value to assign them. Early that fall of 2014, Fisher printed out a copy of Axte's organization chart and taped it behind his desk. He ordered everyone in the office to keep a copy as well. Every time he found a new Robert company, they would add it to the chart, which came to resemble a convoluted treasure map. This has been Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search from my site. Thank you for listening. This is end of part. This is end of part six.